hey, guess what's going on? The UAW, you know, they were having those rolling strikes. Well, it looks like they ended it. They settled it. UAW reaches deal with GM ending the strike against Detroit automakers. And it looks like they got a great deal. This goes to show you the power of a union. General Motors and the United Auto Workers Union reached a tentative contract agreement on Monday, a deal that would end the first ever coordinated strike against the Detroit three automakers. That's according to two sources familiar with the matter, who told Reuters the UAW won record pay hikes after six weeks of strikes. The deal follows those reached in the last few days by the UAW with Ford and Chrysler parent Stellantis in what amounts to significant victories for auto workers after years of stagnant wages and painful concessions following the 2008 financial crisis. Details of the GM deal were not announced, but sources said the UAW won the same wage increases it agreed to at Ford and Stellantis which raises top pay for veteran workers by 33 percent. Nearly one-third of the union's roughly 150,000 members of the Detroit Three joined a series of walkouts that began on September 15th in what ultimately cost the automakers and suppliers billions of dollars. The three tentative deals are a win for UAW President Sean Fain, who organized the precedent-breaking strategy of bargaining with all three automakers at the same time and threatening strikes at key factories to accelerate a bidding war among the companies to avoid more walkouts. U.S. President Joe Biden, who has touted himself as pro-union and backed the UAW, on Monday lauded the tentative GM agreement. GM workers will return to the job after an official announcement of the agreement, according to the Reuters sources. A GM spokesperson declined to comment. So I thought I thought there was a chance that that UAW leader, what was his name, uh, Sinn Féin? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that guy was uh, maybe in bed with the professional, with with the people he was supposed to be right. organizing against, because he's doing a rolling strike and this and that. Why not just strike everybody? So I was skeptical. I got to tell you, I was skeptical because most unions are kind of compromised. Uh, that's the problem with unions. Not there's unions are a great idea. It's the only way workers can actually get a fair wage and a piece of the uh, the profits that they generate. And it turns out it worked. So what? So here's this guy. Here he is. That guy. Jim I was. Payne. Mr. Sinn Féin. Uh, <laughs> so UAW President Sean Fain says this is a turning point in the class war that's been raging in this country for the past 40 years. He labeled the union's tentative deal with Ford a call to action to workers everywhere to organize and fight for a better life. So it actually worked. What did they get? You want to know this what they got? This contract is about is. more than just economic gains for auto workers. It's a turning point. In the class war. Well, let me just show you what they got before we go to him. They got a 25% raise over four and a half years. So that's like a, that's like a 6% 6, 6 raise a year almost. 11% uh, raise at ratification. So immediately they all get an 11% raise immediately when they ratify this contract. They don't have to wait four years for that. That happens immediately. They get a 68% jump in starting pay. So that's been the way they've been screwing workers for the last uh, 30 years is they've divided workers. Like, well, your starters are going to get worse benefits. They're going to get worse pay. They're going to get this. But the people who are already here, we're going to take care. So they're not doing that anymore. Look at that. A 68% jump in starting pay. That is unbelievable. A 33% increase in the top wage. 150% raise for temporary workers. So now they can't undermine the uh, the the uh, permanent workers with temps anymore. And increased retirement benefits and restoration of COLA. That's a cost of living adjustments. So uh, under the new tentative agreement, get this. This I kind of buried the lead. The average all-in hourly compensation for United Auto Worker Auto Workers for the UAW auto workers, meaning benefits plus pay, is estimated at eighty-eight to eighty-nine dollars an hour. You know what they get paid at Tesla? Forty-five dollars an hour. That's the difference a union can make. 
That's what everybody should be making in America. There it is. We're the richest country the face of the earth has ever seen, and we've been screwing our workers for the last 50 years because criminals have taken over our goddamn country, and the only way to fight back is through class solidarity and organizing, mm-hmm. and that's what the UAW just proved. And this is the only thing that scares the oligarchs is when people join together, not by identity, not by their sexuality, not by their gender, not by their race, not by their ethnicity, but they all join together along class lines to oppose the oligarchy. And this is the result. And you know how they did it? They didn't go to the shop floor and say, hey, who's here is a gun nut? You're out. Who here is against trans rights? You're out. Who's here for the LGBTQ flag? There you are. But they didn't do it that way. They want everybody has the same economic interest. If anybody wants to join with us to oppose the oligarchy, you are welcome. And they won eight. So when you get an eighty nine dollar an hour wage, guess what? That helps. That helps black people, Hispanic people, gay people, trans people, people who have been abused by white supremacy. That helps everybody and the way you get that is by organizing along class lines the opposite of what the democratic party and cornell west pushes right now it's the opposite that's how you get it you don't stress identity politics you stress class lines organizing along economic interests you don't divide people you unite people under a big umbrella against the oligarchy and that's the result. And an $89 an hour wage does more for black, poor black kids than anything that you're going to win them from. Anyway, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's how you do it. Yeah. That's how you do it. Go Was ahead. It their, their, uh, their pay had been low because of 2008, that crash or something. So they, they were had, used. Yeah. Ever since then, they've been they never used, adjusted. And it. they never. Uh huh. That's right. And then they've been doing those contracts where they screw the new. Oh, the new hires are not going to get they're they're not going to get all the benefits and the new hires are going to get the pension and the new hires are going to get a good wage. But the people who are there. So you'll vote for that contract because you got to because the new hires don't get to vote because they're not hired yet. So you want your piece of the pie. So you're willing to screw over the next generation. Well, they put a stop to that stuff. Well, Mad Money Jim Cramer ain't going to like this one bit. He is not going to like that one <laughs> bit. And so this is how you do it. And that's what helps everybody. And that's how you actually organize. Don't listen to those people stressing identity politics. Don't listen to what Cornell West says about how to organize. This is Listen to that union leader. Let's listen to him right now, actually. This contract is about more than just economic gains for auto workers. It's a turning point in the class war that's been raging in this country for the past 40 years. For too long, it's been one-sided and working class people have been left behind. That's why this contract is more than just a contract. It's a call to action to workers everywhere to organize and fight for a better life. The auto workers at Ford just won a major battle in the fight for a better world. Billionaires aren't going to save the American dream. Working class people are saving the American dream. The UAW is saving the American dream. And we are doing it together. Thank you and good night. Wow. Uh, I got to say, I was a skeptic. But this guy's turned me into a fan. I guess Sinn Féin is a legitimate political party. I guess Sinn Féin is now a legitimate (laughs) political party. So what? So I, here's what I would think would need to happen. And now the next step is that the United Auto Workers start their own goddamn political party. Yeah, I know. That I, that's what I would, vote for them over Republican. Oh, Republican and Democrats yeah. and the Green Party <laughs> any day of the week. I would vote for them. The Green Party is going to go focus on uh, LGBTQ issues and nothing else, and occasionally environmental issues. And they don't give a shit about anything else. They're Russia Gators. Uh, they're the ones who the, pushed uh, mandates and and that helped big pharma and they took away the that mandates take away workers rights. And that's what the Green Party was for, taking away workers rights. And so now we and Democrats and the Republicans don't give a shit about workers rights or this country one bit. So these are actual Americans who care about actual Americans in America. And they're willing to put their neck on the line to fight for them and go on strike and do it and set the template. And this is 
is the only thing that threatens the oligarchy, and this is the only thing. And so right now, I wish they would start a political party. That's what we need, and that that's what Shama Sawant said was the goal. That's what I thought I heard her say, and if maybe I'm wrong and she can correct me, but I thought that she wanted to start a workers' organization, and the workers would then start their own political party, and that's what I think, but... Uh, and, uh, you know, there's anyway, I don't want to get into that. But let me throw it to you, yeah. Craig. What do no, you We've been talking about this for quite some time that if a new leader comes out, if he comes out of labor, it will be powerful. You know, we uh, we don't know, obviously, everything they've gotten right now. I think this is just early information. But this guy didn't say one thing about anything culturally. He talked about he didn't class, talk about bathrooms. Class, class. He didn't talk no, about yeah. he didn't talk about banning books. Nothing. He didn't talk about bathrooms. He didn't talk about uh, flying flags. He didn't, right? He didn't no. talk about any of that stuff. He talked about economic issues. You mean yeah. he's a class reductionist? Oh, yeah. He's a, they would call him a class. So that's what... Uh, that, that, I, I can't believe that that many, like, academic, educated people could could push that bullshit. That class, you saw it happen at Cornell West yeah, did it on our show. Class is not downstream from <laughs> I, identity. It's upstream. And yeah, that's the number one thing. The number one thing is class. And then you silly Halloween party costume ideas. That's right. Those are below that, actually. Bo actually, that's exactly right, that's Kurt. Nice, and that's right. what I'm calling yeah. your identity yeah. and your whatever. That's right. It's a silly it's, Halloween costume. And it's not. Worry about that after you get your wages. Yeah, get yeah. your $89 <laughs> an hour. And then you can start worrying about all that other stuff. But first, get your $89 an hour. Get your benefits, get your pensions, get your job security, get your uh, worker safety, get all that stuff. And then you could start worrying about all that identity politics stuff. Unfortunately, Cornell West is leading with that, which which is a he's big, not a worker. He's he's not a worker. He's never he's been living in ivory he's more towers. Of a jerker, you know? <laughs> his whole life. He's lived a much easier life than I have, and that's why he's not in touch with uh, what needs to be done. But guess who is? Mr. Sinn Féin. Is <laughs> Sinn Féin, baby. Sinn Féin is a legitimate political party. This is how you do it, and this was my message to Cornell West, which he didn't want anything to do with. Uh, but he did want to listen to Peter Dow, the biggest infiltrator in the history of politics. And uh, he's still defending him I to this day. I think he wasn't day. really running. Is probably what if, turned yeah, out to I be. mean, if he was actually running for president, <laughs> he probably would, would give a shit. But it was obvious race. when he came on our yeah. show that he was not really running for president. But of all the people pretending to run for president, Cornel West is my still my favorite. Yeah. I like how people say, well, I'm still going to vote for him. You're not going to be able to because he's not going to be on any fucking ballot. <laughs> Did someone say there's yeah. me? I'm voting for Cenk Uger. Yeah. No. Cenk 24 is the only thing that can save us now. Yeah. We need a this much. This is the most important election in history. We need us. And that's why I'm voting for Cenk. We need a, we need a much uh, fatter, sweatier. We have a uh, dumber, guy. louder guy to do exactly what Joe Biden is going to do. Yeah. To come. Anyway, to expand our beast, I love Jen Huger. I got nothing bad to say about him. Well, no, uh, we just need somebody to come out of labor right now. Would be a great leader right now. That's what we need. Well, Jenks not, not a union guy. Jenks not a union guy. That's the problem. There, the, Joe Biden pretends mm -hmm. to be a union guy, and he. I think the reason why Joe, Joe Biden pretended gave lip service to this mm -hmm. was because he knew it was going to succeed. And he knew he couldn't get be on after he crushed that railroad u workers union. He couldn't be seen being on the side of something that he knew was going to mm. succeed because this guy, this Sinn Fein guy, actually knew what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And he knew it was going to work. Yeah. And so Joe Biden didn't want to see be, be on the losing side of this thing. Uh, and so that's what that was about. And, you know, uh, the whole Democratic Party are union busters, right? From, that's from AOC to Bernie Sanders to all of them. They're all union busters. They crushed that railroad. They don't give a shit. And they didn't do it. And, they, and it, they, this didn't succeed because of the Democratic Party or Bernie Sanders or the squad or Jamal Bowman or any of those people. This succeeded because of this guy and the workers who stood in solidarity. That's why this worked. Yeah, Sinn Féin did it. Sinn Féin. <laughs> they should start the Sinn Féin party here. That would be great. I will vote Sinn Féin now. <laughs> I, would, I would donate for them to have some Sidewinder missiles. Yeah. Uh, nice job. Look at that. That's the power of a union. And isn't it weird that the auto workers didn't just leave the country? Because that's what they always tell you. Hey, if you want to get a $15 minimum wage, then they're just going to get a machine to do your job. Yeah, and why don't they have machines to do their jobs? Why don't they just have machines to do their jobs? Why don't they just do Amazon's that? Amazon's got machines coming out now to do their jobs. They're, they're, they're going to they're gonna try to do that. Uh, anyway, that this is this is the that's how you do it, right? And guess what? 
uh, Ford and Chrysler and GM are all going to make billions of dollars. And guess who else gets to have some of that money? The people who the workers who generate yeah. that money. That's the beauty and the power of unions. And those right to work states all have lower wages than union states. OK, just so you know. And that's the only way workers ever got power was through organizing along class lines. And that's what this is all about. Anything you want to say, anybody? No, if you don't like people that don't like that idea, you know, because people are knee jerk, like, no, unions are bad, but like, okay. So, so unions who are corrupted are bad. Yeah, like, it, this isn't Star Wars. They're like, also, once everything is one big giant monopoly, you can't go argue for yourself. That's right. You can argue for yourself, like, like I, here, I could, hey, I want more for this. A big company, you, how would you possibly be able to negotiate? Without all the workers around you, because it's a monopoly now. That's right. There isn't competition where you can go work somewhere else. So I remember when Steph was a union teacher at a union school, and uh, the history teacher was the probably the he was against unions because he's the worst history teacher in the world. He doesn't know <laughs> anything about history, and his theory was, well, why should I be paid just as bad as the worst teacher if I'm going to be? Doing, hey, you know what? There's lots of private schools out there. Why don't you go test your fucking theory that you don't need a union yeah. to get a good wage? Well, he didn't. He still stayed working at a union school, right? Pretending he's a rebel and he doesn't need a union. Why don't you go work at a private school? There's millions of private schools everywhere. Why don't you go test your theory about you being paid the wage you really want? You know who else said that? The German teacher. Really? You think there's a high demand for German teachers in <laughs> private schools? That's why you're at a goddamn union school, because you could get a union wage at a union school school and that's uh so or garbage man if you i mean my parents both work for uh selling garbage service municipal service where right the county doesn't provide it uh-huh if you work for a private garbage collector that's a brutal that's job brutal. Man. i mean that's a rough job compared to a, a union uh garbage <laughs> it really and is so like are, hey are there problems with unions yes unions uh but that the answer to that isn't to get rid of unions yeah the answer to that is to fix unions so you can get stuff done like this and so workers can actually have a voice and so workers can actually get a piece of the profits that they're generating and if you think you're gonna be able to go and negotiate by yourself in a system like that you're a sucker you're that's exactly what they want you to think that's what right to work, right to work for less fucking money that they slave. Leave out the second part of that sentence. Oh, it's a right to work state, right to work for less money and to be exploited more by a billionaire. That's what right to work states are. Come see us doing uh, live shows. We're going to be in Levittown, Red Bank, New Jersey, Wilmington, Delaware, Covina, California, Burbank, California, Oxnard, California, Venice, California, Palmdale, California, Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Iowa, Milwaukee and Lansing, Michigan. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.